Hello and welcome to Mark's Madness. Thank you so much for joining us alongside Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. And Mark, of course, this show is called Mark's Madness. <laughs> and boy, does that apply in yes. March with, with high school basketball and all of the madness that's taking place as we move through district week and into regional week. And let's begin with the Division I Lima Senior Spartans who advanced out of districts to the district champs after beating Whitmer and then Toledo St. John's for a third time. Both of those teams, they beat them for a third time. Points a little harder to come by in, in the district round. Well, they really have been for the Spartans, and I think for good reason, because they've obviously shut their opponents down as well. But you're playing somebody for the third time. They know your offense. They know your tendencies. They know your players. And baskets were very hard to come by in both games. In that game against Little St. John's, they had good shots. It just didn't go in for them, too. That was part of the problem. Very low scoring game. But again, you, all you want to do is just win and keep moving. A one point victory over St. John's. They got off to a good start, and you're thinking maybe this is going to be a blowout for the Spartans, but no, defense. Yeah, absolutely. And, and coaches continue to remind their players, and it's especially true in the tournament, it's 32 minutes. You, you guys just play and continue to play well for 32 minutes, and good things will happen. It did for St. John's. They just kind of gradually got back into the basketball game with a good second quarter, then it was a dogfight from there on out. So they'll play Lorraine now in yep. Toledo on Wednesday. What do the Spartans need to do to get past the Titans? Well, first of all, this is good, I think, for them. Let's go play somebody new, somebody we haven't played yet, and, and they don't know us very well. And also, my guys will listen and practice a little bit better because it's somebody new they have to focus on. Lorraine's big. They have 6'7", six, 6'5", six, in the post. They have a point guard who was uh, all league in their, in their conference. So if you can handle the basketball and then get the ball down inside, they're very talented. They have four players that average between 10 and about 17 and a half points a game, so they can score. It will probably be an up and down game, unlike some of the games the Spartans have played lately. One of those situations now, you're in the regionals, you got to play well every game. Yeah, this is, this is where it gets serious and yep. everybody's coming for you. You know, Lima Senior was the number two team in the state all season long. We'll talk a little bit more about them when we get to your weekly play breakdown, Mark. But the number one team in the state all season long, they're out. They lost. Huber Heights, Wayne, the defending That's state right. champs in D1. So now Lima Senior really has a big target on their back. Well, they do. And, of course, everybody knows you've got to show up and play. Lakota East beat uh, uh, Huber Heights, Wayne. Uh, that happened. And now, you know, who's the next team in the line that you want to look at? Not only do the Spartans have a big game with Lorraine, they'll probably match up with, well, the win match up with uh, Bay Village or uh, Camp McKinley. Camp McKinley's been in the state tournament like 28 times. They were there, what, in, they won it a couple times in 2005, 2006. They're always a very talented program. So that's one they're probably going to have to look at, too. All right, let's go to D2 now in the ONU district, our WBL district. And we got that Western Buckeye League rematch yep. between the co-champs of the league, Defiance and Ottawa Glandorf. Titans avenge the regular season loss, and they're the district champs. Well, I think one thing we really learned with OG is they can play in different styles because they play a, um, Upper Sandusky, and it's an up and down, run and shoot type basketball game, not a lot of half court offense. Let's just go get it. And then they play Defiance, a much closer game, low scoring game, and they've proven they can win in both styles. Yeah, you mentioned OG beat Upper, Upper was unbeaten. Yep. Defiance handled Eli to no problems in the semis. And then in this rematch, the pace, you just talked about it a yep. little bit. The pace was so important because Defiance wants to keep it slow, but OG was able to get to the free throw line and attack in the half court offense. And at that advantage at the free throw line, plus some tough rebounds late, I think sealed the deal. Yeah, well, obviously, uh, Jordan Vero is playing extremely well right now. They're getting some things out of Cordell Stover as well. But I think Kaufman's rebounding was huge. And how well he rebounded basketball, particularly in the fourth quarter, and snuffed out opportunities for Defiance to get back in the basketball game. Cameron Singleton finished with 16 points. There'll be a new state champ in Division II. Yep. His defiance gets yep. knocked off. And now the Titans move to the regional at Bowling Green University. Well, they will play Lexington on Thursday. Yeah, Lexington out of the Ohio Cardinal Conference. They're 23-2 and two coming in. They were ranked sixth in the AP poll at the end of the year. Um, Zahn and Yautzi are all uh, Ohio players, or all district players, I should say. The Ohio team's not out yet. They're both very talented. This will be a very competitive team. Lexington plays a very good schedule and look for a really, really good basketball game there. All right, Division Three now. We're in the Lima Senior District. And LCC, the favorite coming in, they knocked off Spencerville 65-38. A little surprised at how lopsided that victory was, or yeah. are the T-Birds just that good this year? Well, I think there's two things to look at. First of all, it's lopsided because they got talent. And second, when they get on a roll and they start putting teams away early, it's very, very difficult to get caught up. They've won by 58, 36, and 27 in the tournament. They win a district final game by 27. They're obviously playing well. Walton is just playing so well, shooting the basketball well. Cobbs, Dixon had a great tournament so far as well. 
And we know about the six or seven guys who are getting involved in the game, and Coach Kill's team seems to be peaking right at the right time. And we know the talent that Spencerville has. They're yes. no slouch. I mean, so this was a, a really impressive victory. The Bearcats did beat Wayne Trace in the semis by 11. T-Birds more than doubled up Bluffton. Remember, we were talking maybe Bluffton will give yeah. the T-Birds a problem, but it, it doesn't seem like anybody that you're going to put in LCC's <laughs> path right now, I wouldn't want to be... Edison, who gets to play well, the next at the regional. And, and that's where we're at. Edison was number seven in the AP poll. They're 22 and two coming in. And I've heard a lot of comments. They're a lot like playing Spencerville. They have good, quick guards. They're aggressive. They're active on the perimeter. They have a couple big kids inside who are sophomores or young players. But it's a lot like the Spencerville team. And the way the Thunderbirds are playing right now, yeah, you don't want to be Edison right now. The, the good thing is we're in the regionals. The bad thing is we're playing the number one team in the state. So LCC is two wins away from a third straight trip to state. We know we said there'll be new champs in D1 and D2. Well, we know VASJ who beat LCC last year, they're out. So LCC could be the new champ in D3. I just want to talk about Spencerville for a minute, though. Do you think this season was a success because there was a lot of hype surrounding the Bearcats coming in, partially inflicted on them by us right. in the media? But a lot of these guys are juniors, too. I, I thought they had a really good year. When you think of where they were at in football, and they come out with a couple of guys who were banged up, they got through that. They had great seasons from Nurse, and I think Golke came along, had a good year. Pritchard had a good year. Croft inside has really developed as a player for them. They were 6-2 and two in a conference that was really, really good. I think they had a good year. They got to the district finals. Yes, you would have liked to go another step farther or compete in a little bit closer matchup, but it was a good year for Kevin Sensiball's team. All right, staying in Division Three now, let's talk about the Napoleon District where Liberty Benton takes the district title. They beat Archibald by 7, 68-61. We thought we might get LB Van Buren in, right. in the BBC District Final, but the Knights lost to Archibald, and LB beat Tenora by 2 in the district semis. But how about the Eagles coming up with the district title and a good win over Archibald by 7? Really, we're playing well right now. They've won 13 out of their last 14 basketball games at Liberty Benton. Of course, they tied for the championship in the BBC. Kraft, of course, has played well all year long. Big guy inside. Master Lasco has played well, but really has stepped it up in the tournament. I think he had, what, 26 and 24 in the last two games. A 6'4 point guard makes him hard to double because he can throw over traps. They are really playing good basketball right now for Ben Gurton. Master Lasco also had the game winner against yep. Tenora in that 26 point performance. So now LB on the other side of that D3 Bowling yep. Green Regional. They'll play Ottawa Hills in the late game Wednesday at Bowling Green. Well, they lost to Ottawa Hills right before they got on this really good roll. They lost to Ottawa Hills. The following week, they lost to Arlington. Their only loss in conference play. And since that time, they've been on that 13 out of 14 run. I think LB is playing very well right now, and it would not surprise me at all to see a Liberty Benton LCC final game. Of course, LCC won that game in the regular season, too, but we'll see what happens on, on Saturday night. Yeah, that'd be great to have an all-local oh, regional be, final at Bowling Green. That'd be good, and you would bet the way Master Lasco is playing now, May shoots the ball well from the perimeter. We'll bet they can hang with LCC, but we'll have to wait and see if we can even get to that game. All right, we're on to Division 4 now, and a third Lima team has won districts with yep. Perry winning its first ever district title, defeating St. Henry in that district final at WAPA. Well, that was the question coming in, you know, and I know we all talked about Mac plays a more physical style of basketball and Perry is a finesse basketball team. How would they succeed against that? They come up with a three-point win over Fort Recovery, a nine-point win over St. Henry. They prove they can bang inside. They prove they can attack a physical defense and defend themselves. They've had a good weekend and now moving on. A lot of talk this year by us and, and pretty much everyone about Lima Senior and LCC and well-deserved for those two schools. Right. Perry might have gotten overlooked in that shuffle Agreed. because what a season they've had and to make history the way they did. And, and Matt Tabor was very emotional when Mark Kuntz did the interview with him post game that we aired on the Sports Report. It's worth taking a look back on our YouTube channel. This means a lot to that community. I would agree with that. And we're looking at slights because we were part of it. You know, we, we didn't hit Perry as much as we probably should have during the course of the season. But Jacoby Lane Harvey, Come on now. He, he's only an honorable mention all district. He plays on a fine basketball team that had just three losses to teams who were in higher divisions. Yeah. He's a 20 point a game scorer. He can defend, he can rebound. He is very smooth with the basketball. For him to only be honorable mention all conference or all district, that was a real slight by the media. Well, maybe the Commodores can use that yeah, slight by the yep. media in their regional semifinal, which will play on Tuesday against Yellow Springs down in Kettering. 
you like the Commodores' chances? We don't know much about Yellow Springs. What we know about Yellow Spring is this could well be a track meet. This will be two teams that really like to get up and down the floor, really like to score points. I would look for it to be a very fast-paced, up-tempo game, and I think the Commodores are in pretty good shape going into this one, even though they are juniors and in this experience for the first time. And I know I talked the other day with Matt Childers and Vince Coase a little bit. It could well be good for Perry that they play on Tuesday night. Because, you know, you just finish up, if you have all week to think about what we've done and all these things we've accomplished, if you don't play until Wednesday or Thursday, sometimes it gets into your head a little bit to get right back on the floor, go to practice Sunday, Monday, get out there and play again early in the week. I think that's really good for the Commodores. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out for them on Tuesday night. But I agree with you there. Get them out there, get moving quickly. Elsewhere in Division 4 in the Dayton 2 District, Fort Army falls to Southeastern in overtime. So a good season for the Redskins yep. comes to an end. They were lost in what, overtime I think it was? 79-71 yeah. in overtime. Good for them. South Charleston, Southeastern, that's one of those teams you kind of pencil into that regional or at least in the district final bracket every year. They're going to get Jackson Center now, and that's kind of the complete opposite of Perry. They want to hold the game into the 40s, perhaps 50 points, and be very slow and methodical and patient. It's worked well for Coach Elkert so far. Yeah, let's talk about Jackson Center. They're the D Dayton three district champions after beating Fairfield, Cincinnati, Christian. And Tigers also beat Fairlawn by two in a tight district semifinal. So well represented the Shelby County League at this stage, right. and Jackson Center continues to power on to regionals. Well, you mentioned that Fairlawn game. That's a 42-40. Again, that's a team you played twice in the regular season because they're in the same conference. But I like what Jackson Center has done defensively in the tournament. They've given up 23, 31, 40, and 43 in the tournament. And obviously part of that is taking care of the basketball, not taking bad shots, not being in a hurry offensively. And then you add to that the fact that they're very solid on the defensive end and they rebound the basketball. So ja Jackson Center is on the other side of that Kettering Regional and you said yeah. they'll play Southeastern. If we had Jackson Center Perry, those are two opposite styles. <laughs> what do you think would happen? Well, th that's one of those who's, who can willpower the game to go the way they want it to. And you know, I'm an old guy, Matt. I remember the old turntables, you know, with the 33 and a third and 45 and 78, and there's only a few people in our audience even know what that means. Yes. <laughs> but every record played better at different speed, uh -huh. and that's how these two teams are. They play better at different speeds, and they'll see which one comes out to win that one. Great analogy. Great it'd, analogy. it'd be great if we get to that. Yeah. All right. In Division Four, at the Elida District, we had an instant classic between NWC rivals Lincoln View and Crestview. And why don't we just go right to the play breakdown oh. here because we're going to break down a handful of plays that decided games late. And, and this is why this time of year is so great. But for Lincoln View and Crestview, this game came down to the wire. And check out this game winner. Well, you're right. First of all, I told Mark Koontz when we talked about, or I told Mark uh, Miller, Mark Koontz is going to put this right away on his instant classic games in about Throw 10 back years. Throwback 44, for Throw sure. Throwback 44. Here you can see Leith goes to the basket. Here's another view at it. I'm calling this game. I say he's going to take it up left-handed. Instead, he throws it up right-handed with English on it, kisses it off the board. They were down one at that time. And here he comes again with this. And I'll say one more thing. Mark Miller interviewed him after the game. This is a well-spoken, articulate young man who should really be proud and represents Lincoln View community very well. But that's a great shot right there. So the Lancers beat the Knights. Now let's yep. go to the girls' regional final up at Ontario, OG and Toledo Rogers, and that's the game winner for Danny Elrbra. How about that? OG playing that, that favorite from Rogers, it seems everybody runs into. Look how far she covers so much ground from outside the arc, two, two steps, and gets that soft one to go in the celebration by her and her teammates. Congratulations to the OG Lady Titans, and unfortunately, they have to play at about the same time their brothers. And yeah, so that's going to be an interesting. Yeah. Well, you can watch her, both of those games on WOSM, but let's close out here with Lima Senior and their defense. Late in the game, it was stifling. It really was, and, and just watch how they've got everybody covered up. Um, there's no open areas to go. You see the front down inside, and there's just no place to take the ball. Then a great move by Ruben Flowers to step out right here and force a trap. But not only the fact that Ruben's able to do that, but let's look at what happens on the other side as well. X is going to come off this screen right here and nail a three. They were up one at the time or down one at the time, and of course, um, X had not made a three-point field goal in the tournament yet. This was his fourth consecutive game without making a three. He makes that's a huge basket for them, and then Wilson makes a couple of free throws late to help seal the game, and, and it was a really good win for the Spartans. A late game situation, so crucial this time of year. So Lincoln View beats Crestview, and Crestview, what a performance by Connor Lotzenizer, 36 oh. for the senior, and he was just unconscious, honestly, from behind the arc. He really was. He had 25 in the second half, Matt, and when you look at that, you go, well, okay, he's got 36, he must have jacked up 100 shots. He was 10 of 18 from the floor, including 6 of 11 from outside the arc. He carried his team to the very end of the basketball game. 
He's had an outstanding career, and I know Trent Zimmerman is player of the year in, in Northwest District from Sadusky St. Mary's. He must really be good because, in my mind, there's not a better D4 player in Northwest Ohio than Connor Lotzenizer. And if you came out to Elida at any point during <laughs> that district tournament, you got your money's worth because the semifinals were great with Crestview over Lipsick and then Lincoln View over Miller City, and then, like we said, that instant classic in the district final. Now Lincoln View moves on to the BG Regional. They'll play Fayette on Tuesday. Fayette coming off a win over Ayersville in a somewhat controversial game because yep. uh, there was a buzzer beater for Ayersville, which didn't count. Photos and video of, you know, well, cell phone videos have shown that the ball was out of his hands. We can't do anything about that. The ref call here, has to stand. Here, here's what we, we forget about that, and that is the officials are told to have a clock inside their head. The clock did not start on time, and the officials There's always knew, human error, right? That's right. The, the, the officials knew if the clock would have started on time, the basket would not have counted. So all those videos with ball in hand and all that kind of stuff, eliminate that. The clock didn't start as it should have, and the officials were absolutely correct in their call. You like the Lancers' chances in the regional semis? Well, now they're in something completely different. Fayette's one of those teams that likes to beat you, you know, 30 to 25. They're very huge inside, great size. They will just pound the basketball and wait, wait, and wait until they can throw the ball down inside. So, again, one of those questions with just a one-loss team in Fayette, can Lincoln View defend well enough and then score enough at the other end to force the pace? All right, let's finish up in Division Four with the Liberty Benton District, where Macomb is the district champs. Did you see this one Not coming? How about the Panthers? Uh, who would have seen that? They lost their last three regular season games. They lost nine of the last 12 games. And I know there was an article where Coach Ladd just got his guys together and said, OK, here are our goals for the tournament. Let's get going. And they have done that. But who would think the team who was 11 and 10 was going to go out and win three games in the tournament and get a couple upsets in there? Now they get to play the perennial power Mansfield St. Pete. Yeah, they'll play them Tuesday at 8 p.m. at Bowling Green. Coming off the win by 12 over top-seeded New Regal, they haven't been to regional since 2010-2011, so this is new for everybody, including the head coach. It is, and Kazmarek is the guy who's really carried them. He's had a great tournament so far, and obviously a lot of other guys are playing well, too, but he's scoring a lot of points for them. Now we'll see what, how they can play with Mansfield St. Pete. All right, let's get to our rebroadcast schedule. Almost every game we talked about will be on WOSN or WTLW in some capacity this weekend. And it all begins Tuesday at 1030 with Mansfield St. Peter's versus Macomb D4, regional semi at Bowling Green. That one will be on WOSN. Tuesday at 1030 on WTLW, Lincoln View versus Fayette, the other D4 regional semi at Bowling Green. Wednesday at 830, Perry and Yellow Springs, D4 regional semifinal at Kettering. Wednesday at 10 p.m., WTLW, I'm a senior versus Lorraine, the D1 regional semi at Toledo. Mark Schein will be on the call for that with Mark Kuntz. Wednesday at 10, D3 regional semi at Bowling Green. Wednesday at 1130, LB versus Ottawa Hills, the other D3 regional semi at Bowling Green. Thursday at 10, Lexington versus Ottawa Glander, the D2 regional semi at Bowling Green. And then Friday at 430 and 830, we'll have the Ottawa Glander for versus the Hathaway Brown girls and the D2 state semis. You mentioned it. I know that the boys and girls are playing within a couple of right. hours of each other on right. Thursday, one at Bowling Green, one at Columbus. So if you have to pick a game to go to in the Ottawa community, come home and watch the other one <laughs> on WOSN. Right. And then depending on the results in the regionals, we will have the D1, the D2, the D3, and both D4 regional finals from Kettering and Bowling Green on the West Ohio Sports Network depending on, on these results, and we'll get you that schedule later in the week. So be sure to check the website, WOSN.TV. That does it for this week's Mark's Madness. Thanks, as always, yep. to Mark Shine for all the hard work you put in for this show, and, and we will see you next week. Enjoy the games.